Greetings, friends, and welcome to Mark's Vinyl and CD Collection episode number 18. It's been quite a while since I've done one of these videos. I apologize, but things have been very busy of late. Um, I have a record coming out very soon. Uh, in fact, I think the first week of April it should be out. Um, I have been going through all the test pressings and everything turned out great. But today, let's talk about some vinyl records that have come in for me, for my collection. But before we do that, I want to send a little shout out first to a member of the VC, um, which I'm sure a lot of you know, and, are, and if you don't know him, you're probably going to get to know him very soon. He's growing his channel quite quickly, and that's a gentleman from Finland named Yanni. And uh, I want to thank him because uh, he started a new series on his channel called, uh, I believe it's called A Closer Look, and uh, the first album that got featured on it is my band Project Gemini, the first record in Ordinary Day. Pardon me. And uh, I just want to thank him very much for, you know, thinking of my record for doing that. And uh, I'm sure it has gotten a lot more eyes on it thanks to his video. And, um, you know, I want to return the favor and have you guys check out his channel because... He has quite the broad selection of music that he likes as well. Um, some of it vastly different from mine, um, but some of it similar as well. So I think that you will enjoy it. Uh, maybe some people who like a more broader selection of music than I show on here might like his channel. Um, so his uh, handle is Grunge Finland. But if you go to his YouTube channel, and I'll post it right here, this address, which is just youtube.com slash user slash Grunge Finland. And I'll spell it out here for you to check out. And uh, go out and check his stuff and sub him. I think he'll appreciate it. He's a good guy, great sense of humor, and uh, has a lot of great albums and things to show on his channel. So thank you again, Yanni. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the records that I got. And that will lead into a rant that I have stirring in this mind that's been bothering me today due to something that happened. And I'll get to that. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the albums that I have gotten in my collection very recently actually so let's start with first this let's kiss destroyer uh people who know me very well and who watch me on the kiss faq podcast are probably scratching their heads going what the hell has he got that record for well i do collect this record i know it's my least favorite kiss record but i do collect it i have a collection of kiss records vast i mean i got about 180 kiss records at this point and why did i get this one well, it's obviously not a normal U.S. pressing. Um, not sure if you can tell by that. Serial. I hate doing this. Uh, yeah, there's a serial number right there at the top. Which obviously is not a U.S. press. And I'll take, show you more. We'll get to the bottom of what that is. Here's the inner sleeve. Uh, this is a little beat up, but... A lot better than some other ones that I've seen out in the wild there. And certainly I wouldn't find this one out in the wild for a very good reason. And I'll show you why. Because I'm sure some of you are scratching your heads about that serial number still. And uh, there it is. And if you take a look, if you look right at the bottom, it says Made in Sweden. Yes. So this is a pressing from Sweden on the original... Bogart blue label and when I first got this the other day I took a look at it and I was like in absolute shock at how fantastic this album is in condition uh, this came from a friend of mine in the United States named Pete uh, thank you Pete for hooking me up with this I also got a Japanese pressing uh, but I had that downstairs. I thought I brought it up with me, but I also got a Japanese pressing, uh, the blue label one, which I'm guessing is the first pressing of the Destroyer uh, Victor Record version of it with the red obi. So I got that as well. Amazing, both in fantastic condition. Thank you again, Pete, for this. Uh, I will cherish it. And this one is one of the better sounding ones, actually, in playing. Very quiet, no pops, no nothing. Like I said, he kept it in very good condition. So, yeah, thank you very much for that. Okay, so next up, 
I've been collecting or having a Judas Priest collection again on vinyl. And what I've been doing a lot differently than what I do in my KISS records is rather than have a whole bunch of different pressings of it, I've been trying to just find really solid versions of the album and just find one. You know, not to have like seven different presses. Some of them I have a couple already, like uh, Sin After Sin. I have a original Canadian and a recent reissue. I've been collecting a lot of the recent ones because they've been done at MPO and they sound fantastic. So why bother hunting for them? I can just get them in my record store and I have my collection pretty much solved. But I do have some of them that I have in the original uh, pressing. And this is another one that I got like that too. This is Judas Priest Turbo. Not a favorite amongst Judas Priest fans, but I don't mind this record. Yeah, they dabbled in a bit of commercial stuff. There you see Turbo Lover and Private Property, Parental Guidance, all those songs that people kind of roll their eyes when they're, especially the diehard Judas Priest fans kind of roll their eyes at that. Uh, came with everything, including the lyric sheet. And I believe one of the reasons why I especially wanted to get this one was because I believe, if my memory is correct, that, yeah, this was mastered by Bernie Grundman. And uh, as we all know, that he's a renowned uh, mastering engineer. So I don't think that the new ones were done by him. I'm not certain, actually, who redid the, uh, the new re latest reissues, but why would you pass up a chance to have a Bernie Grunman mastered version of this album. So there you go, there's the label. It's the original Columbia, well not the original, but the Columbia label for this one. And this one again is in fantastic shape. I got this from a lady in the United States named Kathy, who has a fantastic store. Uh, she does a lot of her selling online and that's where this album caught my eye along with this next one. <clears throat> now, the next couple are going to be all kind of related. And uh, if you don't catch why they're related, I will tell you after I show them to you. Um, but just going back to the Judas Priest for a minute, uh, that album, like I said, was not exactly high on the list of Priest fans. Mainly because they dabbled also in guitar synthesizers was very early in that day for those kind of sounds. And another thing that was very early as well is that they were, it was one of the first records that was done entirely on so many digital equipment, digital machines, digital tape. And uh, we all know how we kind of feel about digital now in this time. But back then, digital was a big miracle almost in the audio sense because back then everybody was sick and tired of the limitations of the analog tape you know think about it it's been it was in use since the dawn of time and people were tired of the you know the the noise that you get from the tape and you know not not as much headroom and then digital came along and offered a much quieter recording you know uh quieter recording medium to record on and people got excited about it and it was the thing for a long time i mean moving pictures was done on digital format a lot of records started going on to digital. I mean, I believe Steely Dan uh, did stuff on digital. A lot of bands embraced it, and they re released some fantastic records. We seem to forget that sometimes. I mean, now the fad is to go back onto analog because we like it because it's warmer and so on and so forth. But digital was not frowned upon back in those days. So don't don't forget, you know, look, look into your history a little bit. Digital was not always something that we turned our noses up on. So anyways... That was not my rank, by the way. Let's go on to the next batch of records. Uh, this is a record that I was looking for for a long time. Um, being in Canada, don't find these records all the time. Uh, this is The Buggles, Adventures in Modern Recording. Uh, if you don't know who The Buggles are, I'll sing you something that might, you know, click your memory. Video killed the radio star. Yeah, that's those guys. This is not that album. This is the second record. And uh, yeah, I got this from the same lady there, Kathy. Thank you very much for this. Uh, and there's a song there on the end of 
side A says, I am a camera. Now, Yes fans might uh, have that name kind of click a bell up there. Yes, it is the same song that appears on Drama, and that's because the people that are on this record, which is uh, Jeff Downs and Trevor Horn, were the people that replaced John Anderson and Rick Wakeman in Yes for that one record. And they ended up using that song on the Drama record. Here's the inner sleeve for this. This is one of those things that I have to admire about Kathy's selection in her store there, and that is that they always seem to have albums in a very complete state with inner sleeves and sometimes even merch sheets and other things, so it's a fantastic ordering from her. I'll, uh, if I can remember to put up her link, I'll put it up here and you guys can check out her stuff too. <clears throat> If I can remember, if I even have a link for it. It's usually on Facebook, on uh, Top Shelf Vinyl. If you go there, they have a, there's a, a group there, and she's on there, and she usually sells a lot of stuff on there. So that might be your best bet. <clears throat> Pardon me. And here is the vinyl, again, in a fantastic shape. And on the kind of uh, not exactly common label of car Carrier... Car Carrer. <laughs> I probably totally butchered that anyways. I better not even say anymore. But anyways, there's the label. And I believe this is the US press. Yep. United States pressing. Of course, I'll be putting up the information on the screen. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything in here of note. There is a sort of Small handwritten initial on here. I'm trying to think of somebody of note who worked on this. We do have a imprint of Columbia, New York, which is probably either the pressing plant that I got done at. Actually, that probably is what it is because usually if it was a mastering thing, it would be the company that was etched on there. So I'm thinking that this is pressed in Columbia, New York. Which is interesting. Don't always get the pressing plant information on there. So that's another record. Now the next one here, I have this record already, but I jumped at the chance to get this because I don't know if you remember back episodes ago, <clears throat> I, I mentioned because a few people were asking me about what kind of pressings I go after. And one of the things I've always said that I like doing is going after pressings from the countries that the artist is from. For example, if I want to get Rush records, I'm lucky I'm in Canada and Canadian pressings are hands down usually the best pressings of it. Just like I believe that Genesis, the best pressings are from the UK. Same with King Crimson, same with Yes. Uh, and that's why I think, you know, Kiss, the US pressings are commonly the best ones for them. Especially if you get the promo copies, they're fantastic. That's why I like to go for, get the albums from their home countries. So when I saw a UK pressing of Steve Howe's Beginnings available at my uh, record store that I frequent, Rick's Recollections, I had to jump on this because, I mean, this thing is in absolutely fantastic shape. And this is a record that came out in 1979. This is an official, original first pressing of this record. UK first pressing at that. We have uh, Roger Dean's fantastic artwork in there. And I just really recently got this. <clears throat> it's a gatefold, so there you can see. It's in great, great, great shape. And uh, just to show you how recent it was, I haven't even changed the inner sleeve yet. This is still the original paper inner sleeve that I was in, and if you look at the very bottom there, it's the Made in Great Britain printed at the bottom. It's the original inner sleeve for it. I don't like keeping them in these clothes. I don't like these kind of paper sleeves. And here we have the, <clears throat> the original center label that came with this album in England. You'll notice the K50151 catalog number. All the British pressings of Yes Records, I think, are all starting with the K in the catalog. And 
and this sounds really really good fantastic stuff um, and again it to me it just solidifies my theory that if you're gonna get a pressing and if you're willing to spend a little bit more like this wasn't crazy expensive by no stretch of the imagination but um, I think it was like 25 bucks or something, which is good considering it's a UK pressing. And in this fantastic condition, I mean, there is like zero ring wear on this. Like, it's absolutely stellar. Like, look at that. Okay. And this is something that came out in 1979. So, no complaints here. <clears throat> okay. And last, well, it's not last, but the last of these series, as you can probably guess, they're all yes related is I also have this record as well, but as I went stumbling through, and this is why I tell people sometimes to just, you know, when you flip through records, don't just look at it and say, oh, I got this one and go next. Investigate a little bit. Sometimes if you take a chance and open them up and take a look at the records themselves, you might discover something very interesting, like I did with this one. Now, this is Rick Wakeman's Rhapsody's record. This came out in 1979, ironically the same year as Steve Howe's uh, album there. Oh no, sorry. Beginnings didn't come out in 79. That's my mistake. Uh, but this came out in 79. This was probably uh, right before Yes went in to attempt the record after Tarmato, the record that in fact broke them up for a time period until drama. So um, this is Rhapsody. It's a rather interesting record uh, produced by Tony Visconti who did the David Bowie records of a note. Uh, Rather humorous inside photo here. That's Rick Wakeman at his comical best, I guess. Um, and you know, sometimes I see these and they have these little bullet holes here. There. And I was thinking to myself, okay, yeah, yeah, promo, promo, uh, supposedly promo. Because you always go in there and there's nothing to indicate it, no gold stamp, no nothing. So this time I just went and I took a look. And I pulled out the sleeve, and lo and behold, I was surprised to see that this time it was properly identified. Because if you take a look here, it says right at the top, promo copy, not for sale. So this is a fantastic pressing of Rhapsodies. I took a listen to it earlier today, and it's quiet as a mouse on a ceramic floor, as you would say. And it it's a good it's a great sounding record. I mean if if this isn't your type of music, great. I mean, but as a pressing it sounds good. Another thing I like about these records, especially from AM, is they have these really nice anti-static sleeves that came with all of them. In fact, they really hyped these sort of sleeves of theirs saying to go out and you can or you actually have ordered from them back in the day. I believe it says here, yeah, you could write to them and they will send you some uh, sleeves for your collection to protect your A&M products. This is a double record. That was record one. Here's record two. And if you take a look here, it's the exact same thing. It is labeled the same way on both albums on all four sides. Promo. Not for sale. Now I'm not. I'm thinking that this is probably not one of the early pressings off the machine. Usually they had the white label promos that were those ones. This was maybe just a later issue of it or later on in a, a later stamper, and maybe they needed to get some more promo out because the record was picking up steam and they wanted to put out some more uh, promotional copies of it. So that's maybe why they did it that way. Um, but what a great album. I like it. I mean, I'm a big Rick, Way Rick Wakeman fan. I have tons of his material on CD and vinyl. And this, to me, is a must-have. <clears throat> now, now we come to the rant part of my video. So, alert, alert, rant. Okay, so today I went to the record store. And uh, every once in a while they have new releases that come out. And lately it's been pretty cool. They've been re-releasing and reissuing some stuff that I thought was really fantastic. Like the Judas Priest stuff, I've been eating that up like crazy and buying it. 
And I'm a big Max Webster fan. And today I walked into the store. And I saw that they had reissued a lot of their catalog. And they released this album. Which I've never seen before. Because it seems like it's brand new. Max Webster, the bootleg. And if you look at the back. It has a bunch of material. That's live from the reunion. And from other time periods in their career. <clears throat> now. What's the rant about? Um, my rant is about the record label here. Yes, OLE. That's uh, who bought out Anthem, I guess. And are, who, who's the, who are now the principal record label for all of the Anthem material, which is Rush and Max Webster. Now, um, <clears throat> this really bothered me when I bought this. Because... When I picked it up, I knew right away that this was what I consider a cheap attempt at trying to grab money. Why? Well, I mean, they could have did a better, you know, album cover. And that's not really a thing. But as soon as I grabbed it, having been involved with making my own vinyls right lately, I could tell right away that this was a nothing sort of release. And I'll show you what I mean. I paid... $27.99 for this plus tax, so it came to like $30, okay, for this record. Now, you got to admit, it's a pretty plain Jane design. Not much thought went into that. And on top of it, what really pissed me off is I went and opened it, and look at this. Look, look. Paper fucking sleeves, pardon my French, for this. Paper sleeve. Garbage. Okay. Now, the record looks fantastic. I, I, have, no, I have no issue with that whatsoever. Um, but, you know, I'm, I, I have my own band or my own project, Project Gemini. And I've been releasing stuff now on vinyl. And when I think, the more I think about this, it really pisses me off because I go out of my way and make sure that when I release a product to people, I want to make sure it's the best that it can be. I appreciate my supporters and their hard-earned money that they spend for my music. Now, I understand it's not Max Webster's fault. He probably had zero say in this, but these people at OLE, you know, is the smell of money that strong for you guys that you couldn't at least put a friggin' anti-static sleeve in here for this? Where is the insert sheet for the information on this? I mean, we have dick all information on this, apart from just in brackets underneath the songs where this is from. Now, in comparison, and I'm going to do this because you pissed me off, here's my record, okay? Now, I got a hype sticker. It was on the album itself, but I took it off and put it on here. Now, let me show you. This record I've been, I was offering and have been offering, I only have six copies of this left. And this is a limited edition run. So this is 100 albums you see at the bottom. I signed it. This is copy number one. Of course, I'm going to keep number one for myself. But first of all, a more thought out cover and back cover than what you gave. Okay. This came with a insert sheet, lyrics, and other information. The first 50 of it also came with a limited edition poster signed, mind you, and numbered by the artist. So I wish I could get that in there. Come on, man. Okay, there's a number. Yeah, there you go. You can kind of make it out now. There. But yeah. Signed and numbered. Okay. Poster as well. And the, the, the main thing about it that I, I have to stress is I made sure when I did this, and this cost extra. Don't, don't kid yourself. It cost me extra and I have no problem with this whatsoever. But it cost extra to get some nice anti-static sleeves and that's what I have here for my release because when I wanted to get this record done on translucent blue vinyl 
I wanted to make sure this record lasted. Okay, I didn't want this thing to be scratched to shit every time somebody tried to take it out of the sleeve. Some crazy, crappy paper sleeve. There you go. And have it, you know, you know, worn out and unplayable within a couple of times pulling it in and out of the stupid paper sleeve. So, shame on you, OLE. You guys really ticked me off with this, to be quite honest. Um, this shows to me zero concern for your product, zero concern for the fans of this band. And they had also released Million Vacations, uh, Universal Juveniles, uh, the first Max Webster with the Blockheads there. Um, that was released as well today, all on this label at the bottom, the OLE. You see there at the bottom? They, they reissued the whole damn catalog it looks like. And I was tempted to buy Million Vacations. It's one of my favorite Max Webster records. So as soon as I picked this up and I felt it, I knew that there was nothing in this. Nothing. Okay. And even if I'm wrong about there maybe being a lyric sheet in Million Vacations, I guarantee you it's still a shitty paper sleeve like this too. And that really ticks me off. I hope to be proven wrong about that. I really hope so. Maybe they just took a shitty approach with this release. But even still, this is $29, $30 with tax that I spent. You could have spent $30 on this and got that. For $1 more, plus shipping, um, you could have got that. And I think people would say, and people who have bought this record, and I'd be curious to see if they will comment about this, but people who have bought this record, I have gotten zero complaints about anything from this record. The record, they've been happy with it. And that's what I want to continue doing. I have a new record coming out very soon. It's done the same way. Everything top-notch as I can. Poster, great quality paper. Uh, anti-static sleeves again for the record. I don't want to skimp on it because people remember. And when you're asking them to give you $30, $30 whether it's $30 Canadian or US, you know, people think about it. You know, they think twice sometimes. Is it going to be worth my money to do it? And they really should think about that because that is not worth it. Okay. So that's the end of my rant. Thank you very much for watching. Um, just to let you guys know, there will be a Project Gemini update coming up very soon. It will be actually update number 50, so it's kind of a monumental update. Um, and hopefully it will be a very important one. So thank you again for watching. I know this has been kind of long, 28 minutes, but I needed to get that rant off my chest. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please do. Um, I'm sure there'll be more rants down the line from me somewhere about something else. But um, yes, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I appreciate your support. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. And uh, this is Mark Anthony K saying bye for now. I hope you all have a great Easter long weekend. And I'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye for now.